afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Bully. Now, today we have a show tailor-made for the ladies. First up, we're joined by House Maestro Zano. And because it's a Friday and we never kick off the weekend without music, he'll be performing for us. He's collaborated with the likes of Black Coffee, Ralph Gum, and Ricky Rick. We also chat to rough and tough actor Paul DeToy. And to top it all off, we're joined by Tibbs Dibello Motswane to chat to us about how to rock the perfect suit in a way that suits your personal style. Jeannie's in the kitchen. Thank you, beautiful Bunny. And of course, we're going to be cooking up an amazing storm in the kitchen today. Now, I'm always really excited when it comes to Friday because, well, let's be honest, summer body is made in winter, but I didn't get that program. So I've been trying to eat really healthily during the week. And now that it's the weekend, I can kind of splurge and eat whatever I want. Carbs. Carb aside me. What do we have? <laughs> so we're making a snook paella. But you got to say it, say it, because I know you get Snook paella. Doesn't it? Don't you want to cringe people say paella? No, I don't pronounce the L's. It's not paella, it's paella. It's paella. Exactly. Okay, amazing. We're adding a bit of like, a bit of snook. It is, but it's all African flavor. Just like, give it a bit of a smoky, fishy flavor. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Exactly. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be an amazing dish for you to create this weekend. And remember, if you want to make it and you want the recipe, all you need to do is... SMS double three six five oh. And the, sorry, the word is snook. So yeah. SMS snook to double three six five oh. You'll get the ingredient list and a link to the recipe. Yeah. So don't forget that no free SMSs apply. Exactly. But T's and C's do apply. And SMSs are one round fifty each. Now, over the past decade, soulful singer Zano has established himself as the go-to vocalist in South Africa for collaborations. He's featured on tracks with some of the biggest, including international names like uh, artists like Ralph Gum, At Jazz, Julian Gomez, as well as South Africa's very very own Ricky Rick. Have a look at this. Joining us in the loft, as promised, is the maestro himself, Zano. Welcome to the loft. Lovely to have you with us. Feels good to be here, man. Feels yeah. good to be here. Awesome. You grew up in Bumalanga, right? Yes, uh, yeah, in a small mining township like? of um, Mbalente. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people in the country know it as Secunda. Okay. Um, and I mean, it was, it, was, it was quite a very interesting um, upbringing, quite a, um, an interesting childhood, especially musically, because, you know, like you're so removed from being a kid who grew up in... Uh, Big city um, life. Yeah. Exactly, you know, and uh, you're able to really just develop your, your own artistry, you know, you yes. just, you, you're just able to have space to just develop who you want to be and who you really are meant to be. Yeah. You started out for many years when you were younger as a lab technician and to find a way into what you love, yeah. you volunteered to work for free. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not the kind of kid who grew up thinking, okay, cool, I'm, I'm going to be a musician, you know, from maybe like age four or five or whatever. Yeah. Music, something that really came, I think, very, um, very late in my life. And um, I got a nine to five as a lab technician. And then after a year, I decided, you know what, um, this is not for me. And um, I then decided to volunteer in a studio back home, which is run by a very good friend of mine called Ernest Mohase. And um, that's where I really just honed my craft for like three to four years before I left um, my township of Mbalente to go study music yeah. in, in, uh, in Pretoria. Yeah. So around the time when you matriculated, your father made you an irresistible offer. You yeah. still turned him down and found a way to study music. What was the offer? So the offer was basically for me to go and study chemical engineering because, I mean, my, my grades are very good at the time. Wow. But I just had this burning passion, man, to, to do music. You know? And my late mother was one of the, um, the people that really motivated me to stick with the dream, with to stick with what I want to do. And um, I remember her very clearly saying to me, if this is what you want to do, then the least you could do for me is to go and study that. So if you want to be a musician, right. then go to school and study right. music, you know. But my dad at the time was like, I'm not going to pay for that. So I'll only pay for the I'll chemical only pay engineering. For the, <laughs> I'll only pay for the chemical engineering. So I had to find a way to, to get to So how did you school. raise funds to study music? Um, I volunteered in the studio mm -hmm. for the four years. And after that, I, um, I managed to get a bursary. Okay. Um, from the National Arts Council to study music. Okay. And for the next four years, up until I finished my uh, my diploma in jazz and popular music, I I just had a bursary to study. You know, I guess just God's grace, man. Well, congratulations for following your dream. And then you got yeah. your first big break through Lebo Matosa. Tell us about yes. that interesting story. My goodness, man! Lebo Matosa was such a perfectionist, such a such an excellent artist, you wow. know. Um, I remember her calling me, it was, a, it was a Wednesday afternoon, and um, 
when she called me, I actually dropped the phone on her because I thought it was a prank. You know? Really? I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, who am I to be called by the great? So she just called Libo you Matosa. out of the blue. Look, she had heard my voice um, from okay. a uh, from a recording that I did for DJ Christos. Um, it, it's actually the first song that me and Black Coffee did together. Together. And um, she heard my voice and uh, she got my number from DJ Christos and then she called me and I just thought it was a prank. And she called me again and said, don't drop the phone. I'm Lubu Matosa and I'm looking for a backing vocalist. And I heard you on DJ Christos' song. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, that was just the beginning for me of, you know, the culmination of where I am yes, right now. Yes. You know, I mean, that was the foundation. and. I got to learn a lot, especially yeah. about music, about performance, and about artistry. Yeah. Which artists have you collaborated with, and who are some that you're working with at present? All right. So the list of artists I've collaborated with include Ricky Rick, um, Ralph Gum, wow. at Jazz, Julian Gomes, um, the UK duo, The Layabouts, mm -hmm. um, DJ Ganyani, wow. obviously Black yeah. Coffee. Yeah. You know, and um, currently um, I'm, I'm taking quite a, um, a different direction musically. Um, I just want to expand my reach and, 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 and just expand as an artist, you know. Yeah. And um, I'm tapping more into the soul and R&B um, side of the music okay. industry, you yeah. know. Because look, at the end of the day, I'm a vocalist, yes. you know. And I believe that as a vocalist, you really have to just um, experiment and expand yeah. more, yeah. you know. You seem really unafraid to take calculated risks. What, what inspires that in you? I would say the studying helped. Yeah. Uh, because it really just helped me to understand, first and foremost, the, the craft on its own. Secondly, the business aspect of, um, mm. of, of, of the music industry. Mm. And thirdly, you know, I'm, I'm quite an observant kind of person, you know. And when I observe the music industry at the moment, people are more receptive to fresh new sounds, you know. I mean, you have... A lot of amazing groups, a lot of amazing new artists yeah, coming up. Yeah. Styles of music that wouldn't have even fathomed to, to, to even think yeah. that they'd be as big as they are today, you know? Yeah, yeah. And because of that, you know, it's, it's much easier to take a lot more calculated risks. Yeah, yeah. So that's what inspires it. So you've been in the industry for a total of eight years now. Yes. You've traveled, you've collaborated with some really great artists. What are some of the things about fame and the industry that really get to you, that you have to work on overcoming? Um, first of all, the misconception that fame is equal to riches, mm -hmm. um, which is a very big misconception. You know, I think when you are in the industry, not just the music industry, but the entertainment industry, it's all about the work, man. You know, um, you work, you work hard, you'll always be rewarded, you know. And um, I've always had to, to, to overcome, um, I think, more importantly, comparing myself to other artists yeah. or comparing myself to other musicians or comparing what I do to other channels of music. I, I really had to find a place and a space in my head to just really be comfortable in my own skin and to yeah. be comfortable in my own artistry and in my own creativity. Yeah, You did mention earlier that your mother was one of your biggest supporters. Yes. And uh, your latest EP is a dedication to her and, yes. and women. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Look, there's a whole woo-ha about Women's Month, yeah. for instance. Yeah. And I, I, I was raised by what people would call right now a feminist. You know, my mom was very headstrong, took her own decisions. If something was wrong, it's wrong. If something is right, it's right. Yeah. Um, she, was a, she, 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 she had a very strong character. And I looked at her life, and I look at what women, our women, are going through right now. Yeah. And I see her life playing in a lot of women that are, that are in the country and in the continent at mm -hmm, the moment. Mm -hmm. And I just felt inspired to put together a body of work that will not just um, celebrate a woman just for being a woman, but that will celebrate the strength of a woman, that will celebrate um, women breaking boundaries, being trailblazers, being pioneers, um, and really achieving great things against all odds. And most importantly, the kind of work that will also let women know that, you know what, as men and women, we're not in a war. Yeah. And as men and women, us as men, there are men out there, a lot of us men, who are there standing with you, you know, and who are standing by your side. Yeah, that's incredible. Now, yeah. later on in the show, we'll be talking about how to rock a suit well, in a way that suits your personal style. You yeah. look like you love a good suit. Um, I'll tell you a very interesting fact. I grew up hating suits. Oh, yeah. I grew up hating. My, 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 uh, my father loved suits a lot. I mean, he still loves suits even right now. 
But you know, like also one of those cool kids, so like, you know, I'm not gonna rock a suit, I'm gonna wear my jeans and you know, whatever. <laughs> and I thought suits are, um, are outdated, you know, until I, I really got to learn, you know, more about style, more about fitting your personality with your style, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so um, that's when I started to just, you know, fall in love with suits and just being the, the classic man, if I may oh, call perfect. it that way. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Ona. We look forward to seeing you perform later on. Can't wait. Perfect. Mm, what a great interview. And you know that a man in a good suit is to woman what woman in good lingerie is to a man. Mm -hmm. Fact. <laughs> Don't go away. When we return, we're going to be getting started with our... Bye. 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 We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. And if you've just joined us, it's a good time because we're just about to get started with this absolutely delicious paella. And you know that I was recently in Spain. I know, so jealous. And I'm missing it so much already. So I'm so glad that we've got a nice right. little a Spanish dish just to maybe help me with my tan. And keep add a bit of South African flair because, I mean, why of not? Course, of course. <laughs> Can you pass me the olive oil? So the first sure. thing we're going to do is we get... Oh, but look at that. Oh, Spanish flair. <laughs> so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our onions that have been just roughly chopped. We're gonna mm -hmm. start sauteing them off. Yeah. So if you've got time, the longer you actually cook them, the longer you cook them and the at lower temperature, the more sweet and the more oniony flavor actually comes out. All That's onions or just the red ones? All onions. Oh, you should, be cooking, you should be cooking them for like 20, 30 minutes before you even add the next ingredient. Is that a fact? It's a fact. So Good trick, Clem. We're gonna use, strangely enough, I know that you just came from the Mediterranean, you know it's in Spain, in Ibiza, it's bomba rice you're supposed mm -hmm. to use. Yeah. We don't really get bomba rice in the country, so we're going to use an Italian favorite, arborio, which okay. you normally use for risotto. Nice. But the way that we're going to cook it, it's going to help us. We're going to get that almost bomba type rice effect. Okay. So that goes in there. I don't know what the difference is. Is there a big difference? Yeah, well, the, between the two of them, what's great is they're both short grain rice, which is what okay. you want. They've got some starch in there, which helps us develop that extra flavor and thickness in risottos and paellas. Lovely. So that's what you want. That's why you're not supposed to be using basmati or normal long grain rice, because that's a, that's a, it's a criminal offense. It won't get sticky enough, what? It won't, it'll break apart. Okay. I mean, it'll still taste all right, but you're not gonna get that amazing texture that you want. Okay. So it's important that you coat all the rice in the oil. That way it's going to start toasting beautifully and develop its own flavor. So what I've got in here is I've kind of created something called a sofrito. Sofrito. Hey, because you African, know. South African frito. It's a South African frito. No, it's not. <laughs> so also it's Spanish. It's like the base of the sauce. So the, the, okay. the sauce, which is the base, sofrito. In here I've got some tomato paste, some coriander, some parsley, some garlic, mm -hmm. toasted coriander, some cumin, again, bringing some, some African flavor in there, yeah. and a lot of garlic. And I just blended that all up. So our sofrito... So where does the sofrito come from? Is that the name? name? Is that's that what it's actually yeah, yeah. called? You didn't invent it? No, I didn't invent oh, it. okay. <laughs> so African frito. I'm concentrating today. It's, it's okay, because sometimes I do crazy things like that. So, <laughs> so what you need to do again is coat the rice in the sauce. Mm -hmm. Make sure that each grain gets coated really well. Yes. Can you pass some of the water for me? Sure. So what you're going to do now is now you're going to add the water and you're going to let it start cooking. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that the rice is going to start puffing up, it's going to start swelling, and the starch is going to be released. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to end up with, if I can just move this to the side, or oh, way to the side, is something like this. And you can Ooh. see all that liquid has been absorbed into the rice and it's quite thick, which is really good. That's what we want. We don't want it to be too loose. Exactly. So into that is going to go some lemon. I love lemon in paella. Yeah. A lot of it. And then the snook. So I'm using Woolies Sustainably Caught Snook, and that's very important. When it comes to fish, you should only be sourcing and eating sustainably caught fish, and that's yes, what Woolies is all about. Mm. So you're not going to go wrong by buying fish from Woolies because you know it's the real deal, Yeah. and you're helping support our ecosystem. Exactly. So into that, here we go. See, I got someone else to flake the snook for me. <laughs> Because, you know, you flake snook now, and a week later, someone will know about it because you'll still be smelling like it. Oh, is that a fact? <laughs> okay, but how do you flake a, f a, flake a fish? Okay. <laughs> what we've done is we've just roasted this guy in the oven for a few minutes, yeah. and then we just carefully, if you want... Like, if I wanted to do this by myself, I mean, how would I flake the fish? Okay. 
Put gloves on, why not? Then you're not gonna okay. get that fishy, smoky smell on your hands. Yeah. Otherwise, when you're done, wash it immediately with other like a uh, uh, dishwashing liquid that contains lemon in there, okay. and it'll take those oils right out. And then do you just stay there with a fork and just push? Oh, how do you actually flake it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you take two forks. I mean, that's the easiest thing. All your okay. hands and just break it, tear it apart. All Remove right. as many of the bones as you can. Exactly. You can't always get every single bone out, so be careful because you don't want to be choking. But then, do you have to use snook in particular, or can you use any fish? Because I, I like boneless fish. Absolutely. So go for something like trout, for like yeah. salmon, or even hake because hake's got a few bones but you're gonna they're quite big enough you can take it out yeah then i've got some fresh peas if you can pass that to me there you go and then that just goes in you've also got some chili how much do you do so the chili's see? actually been in our sofrito <laughs> already but if you want to be daring you can totally go ahead no i'm not that dairy <laughs> so that's it you just kind of warm the snook through again get those flavors to marry and then oh, i'm going to come so soft sides with you quickly because i want to chop some sure. parsley I want but, to get closer to the dish you're making. Oh, that looks so good, Claire. And it's quite hearty. And another thing yeah. is, the longer it sits, the more intense the flavor becomes. Exactly. It's quite strange, it's like a curry. Yeah. But again, we've used those curry spices like coriander and cumin. So fresh. So yum. Helping of parsley. And you've got to serve. And that's it. The lemon in the Basically, actual pan. Basically, the flaking has been the hardest part of this recipe. It is, it is so easy. Okay. And if you wanted, you could even adapt this for the oven if you don't want to be standing over the stove into the mm. oven for a little bit. And you're good to go. So, so delicious. I highly recommend this. So remember, if you would also like to make this delicious dish, all you need to do is send us an SMS, type in SNOOK and send it to 33650. And they will send you the shopping list and, of course, the recipes. T's and C's apply. SMSs cost one round fifty each. Right now, though, let's have a look at the recap. few weeks we've been encouraging you to send in your pictures of dishes using your favorite Sasco product and today we're going to be announcing the final winner of the Sasco toaster and the hamper on the line right now we have finalist Renuka who posted her donut disturbed cupcakes using Sasco vanilla mix hi Renuka how are you Hi, I'm well, thank you, and yourself? I'm superb, and I'm just almost salivating because your Donut Disturb cupcakes sound delicious. Tell us a bit about them. So I use the Sasco Muffin Mix, the vanilla flavor. Yeah. And uh, because we enjoy our donuts and we're looking at trimming down a little bit, I decided that I'd uh, come up with a recipe to include uh, the donut flavor in my, uh, wow. in my muffins. So what I decided to do is add in a little bit of vanilla essence, a little bit of wow. cinnamon uh, powder to my mix, um, and uh, just, you know, I baked it according to the instructions on the packet. Yeah. And when they came out, I dipped them in melted butter, real melted butter though, and then dipped them in a bit of a uh, combination of sugar and uh, cinnamon powder. And, and are they uh, quite donutty? Do they have that softness on the inside like a donut? Absolutely. You know, I've been using Tesco products since uh, I can remember, and they are always reliable, always fresh. So the inside was very uh, soft, vanilla -y. You could eat it the next day, and mm. it tasted really delicious. It was really a donut without the calories. Well, I do not believe that I haven't had a bite of one of them yet. <laughs> they sound amazing. Well, let me tell you yeah. something. You 
are the winner. Congratulations. And we're going to be Thank sending you, so you that much. Sasco hamper and, of course, a gorgeous toaster. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And thank you to Sasco and to Afternoon Express. I've really been able to, to use my creative flair and get baking. Thank you so much. Amazing. You've inspired me. I'm going to try and make a donut cupcake you now. You have to. You have to. <laughs> Lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you very ah, much. Take care. Cheers. Bonnie, over to you. <laughs> well, don't move because in a short while, we chat to Paul Dutoy, rough and tough actor, and all the reasons why we love a man in a good suit. Don't go away. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Paul de Toy has been on South African screens for years, and SABC audiences will know him well from the series Rof of Spoch, where he went on an array of adventures with the flamboyant Terence Bridget. He's currently starring in the stage production Hedwig and the Angry Itch. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank Finally, you, we have Jean. you on Lovely our Lovely to be here. Now, you are such a celebrated actor. I mean, you've done so much work, but also something that, you know, I, I love, you know, watching and watching your work. You've done so much international work as well. You do so many overseas things and so many local productions. Do you ever get a break? Uh, <laughs> weddings, parties, bar mitzvahs, whatever will have me, I'll do it. Um, yeah. uh, no, I actually, um, I, I'm loving what you're telling me about your holiday. Um, I've forgotten <laughs> what it feels like and what it looks like. So, yeah. I, yeah, I'm way overdue for a holiday. Of course. <laughs> but you really are busy actor and I think you know actors have to enjoy a lot of good work but you do so much international work do you think it's the other day the reason why I'm asking is because I was watching a show the other day that was filmed in Cape Town and they used American accents playing South Africans and they had the worst accents I'd ever heard I thought why don't they just hire South African actors to do that you but obviously what? then then I saw something else and they hired so many South African actors to play Americans yeah so I mean, how good do you have to be? How versatile do you have to be with your accents? Well, look, um, the, the best advice I ever got was when I was 10 years old from Gary Player. Yeah. He said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah. So you've got to have those things in your toolbox. You know, it, it doesn't help you arrive at an audition and say, um, yeah, I can learn an American accent. Yeah. You've got to be able to do that. You've got to be able to arrive and say, well, which one would you like? I can give you a New York one. I can give you a Southern one. I can give you the Middle America kind of one. Um, the more versatile you are, the, the, the stronger the chances of you, of you landing that part. And um, the, the Cape Town industry is essentially a, a service industry for yeah. overseas productions sure. to a large extent. So you have to be prepared to, to do that. You know, exactly. if, if you can pull a British accent out of you. If, in Hedwig, I mean, I don't know how many accents I do. I play an East German um, <laughs> a menopausal woman. I play... Um, an, an American teenager. Um, I play um, uh, an, an older uh, Southern American speaking character. Um, I, I even throw in a South African accent, which yeah. would be quite well, I think. We're going to be <laughs> discussing Hedwig a little bit later, but now I want to know, I think we really did see your versatili versatility as a person and as an actor on Ruff of Scoff, but you did an English version of that as well, Ruff or Smooth. Yes, we did it in Ruff or Smooth. Again, Amazing. helps to be versatile, hey? The show was his <laughs> Hysterical. It actually reminded me a bit of when Yanez and I went traveling all over yeah, the yeah. place. How did the show come about for you? That was um, uh, uh, Terence Bridget and I um, uh, have been close friends since forever. He's actually godfather to my children. Yeah. And um, we used to live just down the road from each other. Yeah. And we were constantly in each other's kitchens. Both of us loved to cook. Um, both of us loved to travel. And then one year I was, I was going on holiday to the Trans Sky. And um, Terence said, well, can I come with you guys? Like, Buddy, we, 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 we're going rough on this one. We, we're going to be sleeping in tents. He went, no, that's fine. I can do that. Yeah. So there he was mincing around in a pink kakoi in, um, in a campsite in, <laughs> in the trans guy. And then we thought, actually, you know, there's, there's some comedy here. Exactly. Let's, let, let's roll with this one. And um, we, that's kind of how the idea was born, of, of take, him taking me to the flamboyant, over-the-top, frou-frou places. Yeah. Yeah. And me taking him on the kind of rougher experiences. Amazing. And yeah, the, the rest is history. It was great fun. I can imagine. But now, what were some of the, the best moments for you from that show? I think you're in your second season now. Where were, were your favorite places to? And what, were the, what was the craziest stuff that happened to you? Um, <laughs> um, watching Terence's expression just before he was thrown out of an aeroplane from oh, 30,000 wow. feet, that was, that was funny. <laughs> 
That was really funny. And then he had to do it again <laughs> because what? we didn't get all the angles. <laughs> it was no, fantastic. you are kidding me. It was fantastic. Almost as terrifying as watching him bungee jump twice in a row. Because again, you know, we needed to get lots of angles on yeah, it. But the worst easier. thing is we had to do it at the same time. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, at, at the Soweto Towers. And you can bungee jump into the tower. And yeah. you can also bridge swing um, on a, a cable suspended between the two on the outside. Yeah. So the two of us were going to jump at the same time. And then? So the first time's fine, because you're high on adrenaline and it's, it's easy, there you go. But now when, this, when it comes around to doing it the second time, sort of you know two expect. minutes later, your pituitary gland has gone into receding. And suddenly there's no adrenaline and you're looking at this little harness you're wearing going, I wonder when last these stitches were checked. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I couldn't wussy out and be kind of be the guy who didn't jump because it's obviously, okay. you know, I, I, I gotta not be scared here. So you can literally see our first jumps, both of us jumped. The second jump, we just sort of slid off. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, absolutely terrifying. But you're super comfortable in that role. I mean, you did the, the doozy, so you're quite a... You, you're the action man, you know, you enjoy that. <laughs> Are there any other big races and things coming up for you or anything else you'd like to do and to challenge yourself physically oh, like I'd, that? I'd, I'd, I'd like to do. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly want, wanting to do more of the things. Um, the doozy must have been amazing. The, the doozy is fantastic. Um, I, I try and do that race every year. You really? Um, and it's, it's fantastic. It's a bunch of grown-ups pretending to be Boy Scouts because yeah. it's a completely stupid thing to do. I mean, there's a very good road that runs from Peter Maritzburg all the way to Durban. You just yeah. need to take it. You don't have to do it in a boat. Yeah. Now, I mean, I think I've been, out, of every, out of every actor that I've had on this couch, they say the most rewarding role they've ever played was a father. And, of course, you are a loving father as well. Take me through a bit of your family life as well. What, what a lot of audiences don't know about you. Um, what, well, what they don't know is that I nearly delivered the first child myself. What? Yeah. We, we my <laughs> wife, went into labour on Christmas morning... 300 kilometres away from the hospital. You're joking. Where were you? On to, one of your rough trips? Um, no, well, I, we, I was visiting family on a farm. OK. And, um, you yeah, know, it was Christmas Eve the night before, so um, I'd been on a bit of an enforced stint of abstinence um, in terms of alcohol use. Yeah. Um, yeah. Due to sort of, you know, trying to kind of, you know, go, go, go along the, um, the journey with the wife. <laughs> and um, we were, she was supposed to only pop in about sort of a month's time, yeah. according to the gynae. Um, and um, s six o'clock on that morning. Now, the night before, I'd, I'd kind of reinvented my, my, my abstinence habit. That, that was yeah, gone. You I, were I'd back in a boost to sink a battleship, after all. That's pretty much what I was sleeping <laughs> next to that night anyway. Um, and um, six o'clock in the morning, she woke me up and said, it's happening. Oh, Let's go. Um, and so, yeah, we had to race... 300 kilometres back to the hospital because um, where this farm is is, is, is Middleburg in oh. Limpopo, uh, in Pumalanga. Um, not the sort of place you, wa you want to have a kid. Yeah, exactly. And then as you drive back, the places are, are not great either. The first place you pass is, is Middleburg, the town, which I wasn't going to chance that no. hospital. Then it's Wittbank. Yeah, that's great. Then it's like um, Benoni, oh, and I was like, I, 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 I can't, I can't. Sorry for the people terrifying. from Benoni, but I didn't want my child born there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, from what I've heard, I've heard that you are an absolutely good enough for outstanding. Charlie Theron, but hey, you know. Exactly, but I've heard you're an absolutely outstanding father. But you are the first father that I've introduced on the couch who actually has a better, better manicure than what I have at the moment. Well, I don't know if this is good. <laughs> I did it the first time, and the guy doing my makeup said, "Right, take it right off. I'm going to do it yeah. again for you." Yeah. So Hedwig is, is, is really exciting and I cannot wait to watch it. Let's have a look and see what your co-stars have had to say about you. Oh dear. <laughs> Working with Paul is amazing. He is a consummate professional. He has an extensive career behind him. So as an actress, learning from him and working with him has been amazing. Um, he's a lot of fun and we have a lot of laughing and ridiculousness throughout the rehearsal process, which was great. And he's, he gives a lot. So that's been also a, a gift for me as an actress to work opposite someone who always makes sure that he's focused, he's committed, he gives you everything. But now you're interested. Mm, intrigued, even. Paul, firstly, what is it with you and drag? 
Because yeah. you played, uh, you were in the Rocky Horror Picture Show as well. Yes, yes. I, I, I played Frankenfurter for 19 months. Amazing. Um, and I, I said after that, um, if I ever see a fishnet stocking again in my life, <laughs> it'll be too soon. And then I got involved in Fugard's production of Rocky, yeah. um, subsequent to that, which then also ran for 444 productions. Yeah. That time I wasn't in drag, I was just in underwear. I was playing Brad. But listen, you yeah. look good as a woman. Oh, well, thank you, my dear. Uh, look, I, I, look, I can't rock that skirt, but... Uh, well, <laughs> not many women can, Paul. I know, darling, I know. <laughs> uh, but, but now, what was your biggest or your, your biggest pleasure? Because it's quite a fun character to play. Hedwig, Hedwig is... Um, you know, people ask, what's it about? And it, it's, it's, a, it's a very complicated plot to tell, but in terms of vibe, you could say it's a Rocky Horror on steroids. Wow. It really, um, it's, it, it's a lot more visceral, um, where Rocky Horror's music was based sort of on that 50s rock and roll and kind of a pastiche of that mm. style. This is the sort of late 70s, early 80s punk rock of Lou Reed, Iggy Pop, um, David Bowie. That's amazing. That kind of stuff. It's so super it's, high energy. It's a much more of a guttural, of a, of a gut punch. Um, but uh, it's certainly high energy, it, and it gets there's quite a Dionysian sort of release at the end. So poor old yeah. Jenna is covered in bruises. Um, I've got a couple myself. It's uh, it is a an emotional roller coaster of a really? part. Um, the audience and performers are, are both left pretty sort of devastated and knackered by the end of it. It's yeah. quite an experience. How do you keep your energy up night after night after night? I mean, that's a challenge. Um, I, I I take. Very, very, very good care of myself. Really? Um, I, I make sure that I'm, 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 I'm very fit. Um, I, no I'm, more pre-baby boozing. No more pre-baby <laughs> boozing. Um, I, I'm very careful about what I eat. Yeah. Um, you have and, to be. Um, well, it's, it's, it's the fuel tank. Um, yeah. And also in, in our industry, there's no understudy. If I, if, if I get sick. Exactly. I will go on anyway, yeah. um, and that's no fun. No, listen, you're an no. unbelievable actor, and best of luck with the show. I cannot wait to come and watch you it, and I think everybody come. has to go and watch it as well. Thank you so much for chatting to us. Thank you. All right, if you're in Cape Town, make sure that you catch Paul in Hedwig and the Angry Itch at Gate 69 for a performance that's definitely not to be missed. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on 3. Now, it's no secret that you have to dress for success. And that is exactly what we're chatting about today with Tabello Tibbs Motsuane. Now, we're talking suits and the unspoken rules every man should know about suiting. How sh it should fit, how you should accessorize it, and of course, how to style it. Together with Woolworths, we're going to help you find the perfect suit to suit your style. Welcome. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Lovely to have you here. You dress the part indeed. We love your suit. Thank you. I mean, I, I had to impress. Yeah. You know? You've yeah. impressed. <laughs> you look great. Thank you. Thank you. Now, when it comes to styles and trends, what are your favorites when it comes to men's suiting? Um, I'm all about the classics, you know. I think the classics will never let you down. Mm. Um, I like nudes. I like navy. Mm. You know, black. Can never go wrong with black. And um, I don't believe in over-accessorizing. You know, I mean, what I'm wearing today, I haven't really accessorized at all. You know, I just yeah, actually played yeah. with, with the linen suits. I think linen suits are back. You know, I've been telling my boys about linen suits for a while. They didn't believe me. You know, <laughs> but uh, I think linen suits are back. Yeah. <gasps> I am really a sucker for a well-dressed man. And yeah. I was actually always of the opinion that it's easy for men to dress because, yeah. you know, you just need to get the basics right sure. and you can look really good. Yeah. So let's discuss fit because if a suit fits... Wear it. But, oh, some of them just, if it's not well-fitted, it's yeah. a nightmare. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm a chunky guy, you know, so, I mean, the fit is everything for me. Listen, girls like you chunky. Like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> girls <laughs> like something a little bit thank you. nice thank to you. hug. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the fit is always important for me. Uh -huh. um, I'm, I'm also a tall guy. You know, you got to get it right in terms of length as well. Mm -hmm. um, I run around a lot, so comfort is everything. Yeah. You know, so go to meetings, go to studio. So it has to fit right, it has to be loose, you know, where it's supposed to be loose and, yeah. and hug where it's supposed exactly. to hug. Exactly, yeah. I mean? So, so yeah. how is it supposed to fit and what is an ill-fitting suit? Look, I think it should also always look good around your torso, you yeah. know, and always look good around your ankles. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like, I'm wearing some sneakers today, so it's a bit loose around the ankles to, to show my ankles. And, yes, I have put yeah. on lotion. <laughs> <laughs> 
We love your sneakers, by the way. Thank They're you, gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love them too. Love yours. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Coming from you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 the, it's the little things that you want to show off. Like, maybe you want to show off your watch. Yeah. You know, I accessorize a pair of shades. You know, mm. so today is very relaxed. It's a beautiful mm. spring day, so chill. Yeah. And what are the unspoken rules, the do's and the don'ts about how a man should wear a suit? I think uh, never over-accessorize. Okay. Um, I think your, your shirt collar shouldn't have too many buttons. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you oh, get those, yeah. those crazy, it's like they tickle your, your earlobes. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I can't stand those, you know? So, um, colors, not too many colors, you know? Pick your colors, you know, maybe play with your pocket square or play with the beautiful tie or play with your socks, mm -hmm. if you're wearing socks. But, um, you know, just keep it very basic. You can't go wrong. Yeah. You know, I've got a couple of friends that work at, like in corporate and banking and stuff in Joburg. And every now and then, whenever somebody compliments on their suit, he, he sends me a message saying, suit game strong today. <laughs> and seriously, his suit game is so strong. But yeah. let's discuss accessories, because he plays with accessories just to make it look a little bit different. Like, I'm not saying he goes full Scott Disick sure. on his outfit, but how can accessories work for you? Look, I mean, it's, it's just the details. It could be a mm. beautiful tie pin and that's it. It could be a beautiful pocket square and that's it. Yeah. Or maybe both. But I don't think you should have a tie pin, you know, a pocket square and a lapel, you yeah. know, and, and a hat. I think sometimes, you know, focus on what you want to show people, you know. Yeah. So maybe you want, you want them to see your beautiful tie, so you just got a tie pin mm. and you keep it simple. Yeah, well, I like when guys wear interesting little. socks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually I have crazy socks as well, but I wanted you guys to focus on my sneakers too. Yeah, <laughs> we're definitely, I've been focused on them the whole morning and your suit. I've been thank focused you so on much. your voice. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys were taking notes because it's true, a woman loves a man in a well-made suit. Luckily for you, Woolworths has a wide range of beautiful classics and fashion-forward suits. So getting ready to suit up for summer has never been this simple. Now, speaking about summer, if you are like me, then you will be spending as much of it on the beach as possible. So here's today's instalment of the Tropica Beach Preparation Guide. The Tropica Beach Preparation Guide. The in-shape illusion with Sivangesi. Creating the illusion of looking good is quite simple. All you have to do is get a stylish hat and stand behind a surfboard all the time. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, before the break, we got some expert male fashion advice from style influencer Tibbs Motswane. But don't worry, ladies, we haven't forgotten about you. Fashion icon Jackie Berger is a very busy woman, and Bunny was lucky enough to sit down with her last week to get an update on all the latest trends. Let's take a look.
Joining us is fashion aficionado Jackie Berger, who's had a long and respected career in fashion as editor of Our South Africa and now owner of her own business, Salon 58. She's also featured in the season's trinary styling videos, sharing her effortless style solutions for spring dressing. Jackie, welcome to the live. Thank you, Bonnie. You look absolutely gorgeous. I've gone on about your earrings, I've gone on about your shoes, and I was about to go on about your shirt, and I thought, just hold back, simmer down. <laughs> <laughs> All about simplicity and quality, yeah. which I think we actually going to be discussing yeah. today. Speaking of which, how do you differentiate between style and fashion? Well, it's been a journey for me, really propagating the whole essence of style, where mm. it's very much about the wearer. Um, it's about how you feel in what you wear. And then fashion is, is really the seasonal changes that we tap into, but style foremost, always. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, how would you advise a woman wanting to create a classic contemporary look? I think it's, it really always starts with quality and craftsmanship and always about the basics. I, I really always speak about having a canvas, having workhorses in your wardrobe, and then you can start playing and adding um, signature pieces. But it really starts with those key items that I always say they find you because they speak louder than yeah. anything else. Yeah. Um, and then invest in them, um, play with it in terms of discovering your own style voice, and the rest is easy. Right. Honestly, it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, mentioning key items and basics, what are the essentials that every woman should have in her wardrobe? Well, I'm a stickler for a white shirt. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, because once again, coming back to what we spoke about earlier, your signature style, it's, it's honestly, it's if you find something that's cut perfectly, if you find something that's impeccably tailored, the quality of the fabric, once again, is so considered, then it flatters you in a way that transcends an overt way of dressing. Because we tend to today look at finding fashion items mm -hmm. um, that will say something about us, but it doesn't really, where it's, if you invest in key items that you wear, it says a lot about you. And that for me is all about the allure of the woman and the way you carry yourself. Yeah, yeah. Now quality versus quantity, how do we pri prioritize? So there's a very simple equation, it's cost per wear. Uh, we all like to shop at a sale, but beware because if we take an item, we pay 50 rands for mm. it, wear it twice, it will cost you 25 rands. If you invest and you buy a beautiful tailored shirt, for say 500 rand and you wear it over the next couple of years a hundred times it's five rand yeah. so that's when you sometimes feel a little bit tempted to buy something inexpensive think twice uh -huh. because you're wasting money wow that's very accurate advice now prints are quite big this season and the mixing of prints is quite a mystery to some of us and quite daunting actually what are some of your style tips according to the ones you've seen in your trainery video Honestly, easy solution, Bonnie. Keep to the same color palette, the same tonal value, and also don't go too over top with, with prints. So, for instance, in the trinary video, we've got a small grid print and a small pin dot print. And the, the sort of subtlety of the two really gives a, a very nice modern mm, edge. Mm. Now, how do you think style can define a woman without saying a word? It's Absolutely, it starts with a woman first. Um, as I said earlier, we tend to want to rely on fashion to play the part, but it's an outer message where if we find comfort within who we are, if we find our essence, our confidence, then we will wear style very well. Wow. Now, Salon 58 is a big celebration of style and creativity. Tell us what we can expect at your next foray. We're working towards the, the final one for 2016. Um, a little bit of playfulness, um, a little bit of mystery. It's all about stardust. So it's about a celebration. And um, I think you tapped into it earlier, the, the whole essence of happiness, heart health happiness. And we sometimes forget to play. Um, we think it belongs to just children. Yeah. So at this one, we will be playing. Wow, sounds exciting. 
Thank you so much for joining us, Jackie. Thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> so check out the latest Spring Trenary Collection online and in-store at Woolworths now for all the classic pieces you need to build the perfect wardrobe. And for more of Jackie's styling advice, watch the Trenary videos online on all Woolworths digital platforms. Oh, wow, I wish we could have Jackie Berger in our loft every single day. She's so amazing. I hope all you ladies took some notes. Now it's time to get your weekend going with Afternoon Express. Here is Zana with Don't Bother. She's got her own. How you guys doing? Money yeah. to spend, so don't, don't bother. bother. Hope you're ready for this. Don't Let's bother. go. One, two, three. Let's go. I suppose you're going to flash your money, your wallet. Gonna flash your money. I suppose you're gonna buy bottles by the bar, crack us on the bottles. Well, it's a Monday. Go ahead now. Calling all the girls in the club. Oh, you're the king now. I suppose you wanna hit it deep tonight. Well, I got news for you. She's got her own. with if she's got her own car and her own money to spend. Let's explain. So it's very simple, right? <laughs> it's a song for the blessers, really. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, you know? But it doesn't mean that if you got a woman that you can't spend money on her, you know what I mean? No. So let's not get it twisted. If you That's got a woman, Jenny was worried about. spend, no, no. spend, spend money on a woman, panic? you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I still managed to make all of you fine gentlemen dinner. 
<laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jeannie. <laughs> and of course, thank you. thank you so much to all of our guests for coming yeah. through today. Today's yeah. been an amazing show. Yeah. We're going to have an amazing weekend. Now, make sure you catch Afternoon Express again on Monday because we are extremely excited. Music powerhouse Lira is going to be live in our loft and we hope that you have an amazing Heritage Day tomorrow. And remember to head over to our Facebook page and send us a pic of what you are getting up to this weekend. And uh, we'll be taking a look at some of those on Monday's live show. So tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook post. Jeannie, are you going to serve started. us? <laughs> I will serve you. Thank I'm you really good at this. Have an awesome weekend. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs>